Possibly the most common error of a smart engineer is to optimize a thing that should not exist. The most basic problem that you can have with local models is Z-index stacking. Before 2017, everyone in React was doing global models because of that. But in React 16, we've got React portals that let us define component locally and tells React to render it higher in the real DOM tree. Having that, 2021, eBay Engineering is open sourcing their global model library. And I've only asked myself, why? It has 50,000 downloads per week, and this is only the tip of the iceberg. So many articles online trying to convince us that global model architecture is the way to go. So what's going on? Are there other reasons to use global models? Or is this simply an over-engineering? Which, yeah, spoiler, I think it is. But I will actually try to convince you that 95% of models should be local. I will also explain what I think is the edge case for the remaining 5%. And you are welcome to roast me in the comments if you don't agree. So usually when we start building an app, over time we'll go from one model to multiple models in many places. I actually call it the models law, because every one sprint the number of models in the app doubles. The problems that are often pointed out by the global model preachers is that in terms of code itself, we are duplicating JSX declarations in many places, and we are also duplicating is open, set open, basically use state hooks in every place from where models need to be called. But beyond code duplication, maybe the worst thing is that the same confirmation model from those snippets is instantiated in three different places. So three different copies of the same component lives in the virtual DOM at once. They will be swallowing our precious CPU cycles every time React re-renders. And we know React re-renders like hell. Anytime any of your data changes, just blow away your view completely and re-render it from scratch. We can intuitively feel that the global model will solve all these problems, right? As the name suggests, there will be only one model. But the devil is in the details, so let's look at the typical implementation. And spoiler, this part will include a lot of code, but you don't have to analyze it line by line. I will show you just the skeleton of each solution to get a nice high-level overview and it will pay off in a second, so bear with me. There are two main types of global model implementation. The plain, I will call it dump implementation, and the sophisticated one. Dump implementation is simply one global component that takes some props and internally maintains huge JSX skeleton that renders different parts of the model based on some dynamic props. Here is the footer, but complexity can grow in time. Slightly better is v2 with a huge switch statement, which conditionally renders one model out of many, already extracted into separate components. But it has to maintain the list of those model components as imports at the top. The sophisticated implementation, this is actually based on my simplification of nice model React package from eBay. So it defines a provider to wrap your root component, it connects it to some high-level reducer that keeps our global model state. It also takes care of mounting a model placeholder inside that provider. This placeholder is basically extracting one model component to be rendered, along with its props, from the context. Model components still have to be kept in some global registry for a reference, but we can define global variable to store them and expose register function. So we can extract all model imports and registration to a separate file. I will show it in a minute. Lastly, we also need to expose some show and hide functions, which are wrappers around reducer actions. They will be passed via context to each individual child component that wants to call the global model. This sophisticated implementation is actually very similar in principle to the second example, the one with the huge switch statement. All those components are only making this implementation more sophisticated, maybe more elegant to use, but they don't change the core mechanism of rendering which is simply render one global model based on global state and pass state setter to every child component that needs to trigger that model. To make our picture complete, let's just quickly check how we invoke global models. And there are two main options. Either define a global registry file, but notice that we have to come up with some ID for each model here. Then we use it by calling show method with that model ID. The other solution is to import your custom model component directly inside the nested component where it's being triggered. Then you pass this component to show function and you don't have to use any artificial ID. But we wanted to remove the application 
And in this solution, we have to duplicate modal imports in each call site. Okay, that's enough code. We know the benefits of global modal. Single JSX declaration. Single is open state declaration. No React elements duplication in the virtual DOM tree. But what about the costs? We can get into prop drilling. We need some kind of context or global state management to get rid of it. If we opt for complete code dryness, we have to maintain some kind of global registry, which requires artificial IDs for each model. We are increasing coupling, because now, when we create a new model, we not only call it from some child component, we also have to register it globally. And let's face it, adding models locally is that simple. Managing them globally adds complexity to the codebase. But I left two most important problems for the end. First, when we are mounting a single global state like isOpen at the root component, and then we need to trigger a change of this state from the nested component, we are causing a global re-render of the entire app. As opposed to local models with local state, where opening a model only triggers local re-render. Second, models registered globally don't have access to the local context. Imagine this kind of components tree, where somewhere in between you add some nested context, this is visible for all components down the tree, but not upwards. So if you would use global model mounted at the root and call use context inside this model, it won't be able to access this local context, while model mounted locally still can, even if it's rendered with portal, because in virtual DOM, it's still technically inside this local context aware subtree. Of course, you can still extract values from context at parent level, pass it to the local model and then pass it up to the global model, but then you have more wiring and you are sacrificing encapsulation. Local models are actually even better than this table might suggest. All those drawbacks that I just changed to orange, just hear me out, they are not that important. First, we get 90% of dryness by extracting model code to the separate components. You can have one model wrapper which handles common functionalities like clicking outside of the model, using portal API, etc. And for each type of model, you can create a separate component like alert model, info model, that uses this model wrapper underneath. So if you need info model in three places, you just reuse this component three times. Yes, I know, JSX declarations are still duplicated, but it's marginal compared to the rest of the code that is reused. Duplicated state declarations for some people might seem like a boilerplate, but for others, including myself, it might actually make the code easier to read. Besides, if you don't like them, you can always simply move them inside model wrapper. This is an example from Kensi Dots. You hide state inside model, which is kind of a wrapper for internal components, and you only expose model open button that shares state setter with the wrapper via local context. Then you can use model and model open button inside your components without explicitly declaring state. Note that this is not the same as global context that you have to create for global models. It's just internal implementation detail of the model component. Regarding duplicated component instances, let's face it. In most cases, you don't need to keep model mounted when it's being closed. You actually want to unmount it. The most common way to render models is with a conditional. So in every place where model JSX is placed, React will only reach the condition, it will see that its open flag is false, and it won't need to go through the entire code of this model when rendering. Meaning this is not a very big overhead. So when global models are actually useful, if you are having exactly the same model triggered from many places, it doesn't use data from some local context, and you need to preserve its state between renders, so you can't unmount the model after setting is open to false, then it makes sense to define it globally. But even in this case, you might not need complete global model system. You might as well find a lowest common ancestor for all components that triggers this model. It can be somewhere in the middle of the tree. And only for very complex cases with multiple models, which are kept mounted at all times, it may actually make sense to mount global model at the root of the app, and then also go for some package like nice model React, so you don't have to code it yourself. In programming, there is this rule of least power, which is a design principle that suggests choosing the least powerful computer language suitable for a given purpose. It's a derivative from Occam's razor, often attributed to Tim Berners-Lee. My Occam's razor for models is go local, then lift up, which is similar to what we do with state. Choosing local models, you can also adhere to collocation, which I did in this five minute video on React portals. Again, let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for watching.